cardiac arrhythmias cardiac rate should be between 60 and 100 current should start from sa node follow the normal conduction pathway and velocity should be normal from 100 to 150 beats are simple cardiac tachycardias from 150 to 250 beats are proximal tachycardia from 250 to 350 beats are flutter ventricle or atrial flutters and above 350 is the fibrillations from 40 to 60 beats are mild bradyarrhythmias from 20 to 40 beats are moderate bradyarrhythmias and less than 20 beats are severe bradyarrhythmias any arrhythmias originating from sa node is called sinus arrhythmias and any arrhythmias originating from atria is called atrial arrhythmias any arrhythmias in av nodes are junctional arrhythmias and any arrhythmias in ventricle is ventricular arrhythmias sa node atria and av node arrhythmias are all together called supra tachy arrhythmias increased automaticity is a property of an excitable tissue which can undergo depolarization spontaneously in sa node when sodium comes in resting membrane goes to threshold and now calcium channels open and we see a spike of depolarization now potassium efflux will start and we will see repolarization on sa node there are beta 1 adrenergic receptors for epinephrine this will stimulate g stimulatory protein which will lead to phosphorylation of some additional calcium channels and more calcium will come in because of more calcium sa node will fire more rapidly and we call it sinus tachycardia triggered automaticity in ventricle after repolarization there is a plateau because calcium is coming in and potassium is going out at the same rate then potassium keeps going out and this efflux makes a repolarization of the membrane but sometime depolarization starts before completing the repolarization phase it's called early after depolarization if the depolarization is late from the schedule depolarization it's called delayed after depolarization this can happen due to injured cells who loaded cations reentry or circus movement if there is a scar electrical impulses will move round and round and round rather than flowing away it's called reentry or circus movement very important vagus controls sa node vagus releases acetylcholine on sa node means vagus has inhibitory reaction on sa node if vagus is not working heart rate goes up vagus activity is controlled by respiration during inspiration vagus is inhibited and heart rate will go up During expiration vagus is stimulated and heart rate goes down. It's called physiological sinus arrhythmias. Between two R waves the distance is called R to R distance. During inspiration R to R distance will be less and during expiration R to R distance will be more. sinus tachycardia either because of exercise or fever or any other reason p wave will form early sinus bradycardia means something is inhibiting the sa node r to r distance will be more and it happens to athletes or in joint days or in hypothermia Sinus tachy Brady syndrome is when SA node is injured and sometime it fires fast and sometime it does not fire at all. Atrial tachycardias. Atrial tachycardia, atrial flutters and atrial fibrillation. 
The rate of atrial tachycardia is from 120 to 250 per minute, while atrial flutter is from 250 to 350, and fibrillation is more than 350. In atrial tachycardia, multiple P waves with one QRST complex. In atrial flutter, P waves are many and not prominent at all and then QRST complex. These waves are flutter waves with capital F, just like teeth. Atrial fibrillation means so many vectors are producing and direction is all over the place, so the P wave are just some fluctuation now. For fibrillation, P waves are also represented by F wave, but this is small f. We need to slow down the AV node so only one current can pass through. And the drugs are calcium channel blocker, beta blockers like propinolol, digitalis, which also increases vagus activity, and that slow downs AV node. AV node arrhythmias. Junctional tachycardia means current is passing through AV node faster than normal. Junctional bradycardia or junctional block or noodle block or hard block means current is passing through AV node slower than normal. Current passes through AV node slowly because there are small cells, many membrane and small junction gaps to cross. AV nodal cells have resting potential of minus 60 millivolt, which makes sodium channels permanently closed. AV node depends on calcium channels for depolarization. And because AV node has resting member potential minus 60 and not minus 90, the depolarization occurs slowly because of less electronegativity as compared to minus 90 and cation influx is slow. In ventricle, bundle of his is divided in bundle branches. Bundle of his and bundle branches are made of Purkinje cells. Purkinje cells has resting membrane potential of minus 90 millivolt, and that's why voltage gated sodium gates are functional and depolarization is very fast in Purkinje cells. If current is flowing slower than normal within the AV node, PR segment will be elongated. If current is flowing faster than normal, consuming caffeine or etc., PR segment will be shorter. Caffeine inhibit phosphodiesterase enzyme Cyclic AMP cannot break down, intracellular AMP goes up, protein kinase A activity goes up, phosphorylation of calcium channels become more and tissue receives too much cation and conduction become fast. First degree heart block means after atrial depolarization, it took longer for AV node to depolarize than normal and then current was conducted in the ventricle. Second degree hard block means some of the P waves were not followed by the QRS complex. Suppose we give the patient adenosine through the vein, which will stop the AV node for a few seconds. There will be another pacemaker develop in the ventricle. Now, atrial is driven by SA node completely independent from the ventricle. So, the possibility can be that atrials are 80 beats per minute while ventricle is 40 beats per minute. It's called complete heart block. Heart block 2 has two subcategories, Mobeats 1 and Mobeats 2. Mobeats 1 where there is a delay initially in PR segment, then the delay is prolonged until it misses the QRS completely and then the cycle repeats. 
In MOBIS 2, there is no variation in PR interval, but after a couple of PQRST, there is no QRS complex. In 2 is to 1, second degree hard block, after two P waves, there is only one QRS complex. In hard block 3, there is no relation between P and QRST segment because two separate pacemaker are driving the heart. Tachyarrhythmias. Bundle of Kent is a pathological connection from atria to ventricle in addition to AV node. In EKG, PR segment is curvy line rather than a straight line and no Q. So wave starts from P, then it start curving upward and make R. Current comes in the ventricle and hit muscles first and some small moderation vector is present now. Then it touches the bundle of his and now it will produce the RS wave. It's called Wolf-Parkinson-Wide syndrome. SA node fire will every 0.8 seconds when 72 beats per minute. Bundle of Kent has made a circle around AV node and firing every 0.4 seconds means 144 beats per minute. It's called circus movement. It's stimulated by caffeine or excitement. If within the AV node there are different pathways with different velocities, Every 0.3 seconds, the current will pass into ventricle and heart rate will be 120, sorry, 180 to 200. Massaging the carotid sinus only one side will stimulate vagus node, which will inhibit the AV node. We can also inject bropomil to inhibit the AV node. Ventricular tachyarrhythmias. If ventricle has irritable foci, they can create ventricle arrhythmias. Normally, sodium comes in, depolarization begins and potassium goes out. It is now depolarization. Now sodium potassium ATPase will work to kick out the sodium and bring back the potassium. If heart is going to ischemia and oxygen is less, then these ATPase will not work properly. Sodium will not be able to go out and will be stuck in the cell. Cell will not go into resting membrane potential and their resting membrane potential will develop waves. In another scenario, if the cell membrane is injured, sodium and calcium which is high in concentration outside the cell will trickle inside and will make the cell excited and cell will fire automatic, automa sorry, automatically. When patient get excited, he produced adrenaline. Heart has beta-1 adrenergic receptors on the surface where adenaline binds and stimulate G protein which will stimulate adenaline cyclase which will convert ATP into cyclic AMP and this will stimulate protein kinase A. Protein kinase dephosphorylase some calcium channels and more calcium will come in and cell will be loaded with calcium and cell will start to autofire. QRS wave will be abnormal and downward, then everything will be normal and then again abnormal QRS complex. It's called a ventricular premature beat. Sometime after normal heartbeat, we get couple of abnormal QRS complex back to back and then normal restores. If it is more than 120 beats per minute, it's called ventricular tachycardia. Ventricle flutter is when ventricle starts so many waves, they exceed 250 beats per minute. If electrical activity is this fast, cardiac mechanical activity will go down and output will be low. 
and many places in ventricle will fire simultaneously and we call it ventricle fibrillation. In flutter, only one or two places in ventricle firing rapidly, while in fibrillation, so 